Stories of Ghosts. As you listen to the story, try reading along in your own book. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Chapter One: The Story of Shiverham Hall. Have a frightful stay, madam. Shiverham Hall was a hotel with a difference. All the guests were dead. Ghosts came from the spirit world to be greeted by Shiverham's spooky staff. There were twenty-two ice-cold bedrooms, a poltergeist-powered jacuzzi. Ah, lovely. And a string quartet playing haunting tunes. No living soul dared visit the hotel. It was far too creepy. The ghosts were left in peace. Then one afternoon, the hotel's deathly hush was shattered. Slam! Most of the ghosts were napping. Mister Quiver, the hotel manager, had come down for a glass of water. Suddenly, a round-faced man flung open the front door and strode up to the reception desk. This is just what I've been looking for. He boomed. A tall, thin man scuttled in after him. Hmm. Are you sure, Mister Slate? He asked nervously. Of course I'm sure, Simpkins. Barked Slate. This will make the perfect site. For my new hotel, I've had it all designed. Slate proudly spread out a large plan in front of his assistant. Behind them, Mister Quiver sneaked up to get a better look. Slate Towers Luxury Hotel, rooftop sun terrace and pool, suite for personal guests of Mister Slate, all night burger bar. Giant twenty-four hour disco, underground parking for five hundred cars. Mister Quiver was horrified. I'll have this place demolished in no time. Slate went on. But perhaps I'll look around and see if there's anything worth saving first. Don't be too long. Gulped Simpkins. They say the place is haunted. Ridiculous! Cried Slate. Ghosts don't exist, and I'll stay the night to prove it. We don't exist, eh? Thought Mister Quiver as he floated upstairs. Minutes later, he gathered the hotel staff together. No one was happy about Slate's plans. We'll never get any peace in his noisy new hotel. Wailed Charlie, the waiter. And where will our ghostly guests go? Asked Elsie the maid. Slate will have to be frightened off, said Mister Quiver. As soon as it gets dark, we'll start haunting. Slate was climbing the rickety stairs to bed when Mister Quiver appeared in front of him. Be gone from Shiverham Hall! Slate looked a little surprised, but then he shrugged. Out of my way, Potato Head! He shouted. Mister Quiver had never been so insulted in his life, or his death. But the ghosts weren't finished yet. As Slate brushed his teeth. Igor, the porter, popped up through the plug hole. <laughs> Another stupid spook. The staff didn't give up. That night, Slate was visited by a stream of ghosts. Elsie brought the bed sheets to life. Charlie rattled a ghostly tea tray next to Slate's pillow. Cora, the cook, sent possessed pots flying through the air. Even the hotel guests tried to put the shivers up the unwelcome visitor.
Sir Gauntlet showed off his battle scars. Lord Doublet lost his head. And Miss Gauntlet, the Wailing Lady, moaned the entire night. But none of them could raise a single goose bump. Next morning, Mr. Quiver listened in on Slate's meeting with Simpkins. You were right, said Slate. This place is full of ghosts. R -r really stuttered Simpkins nervously. So you'll forget your plans? No way, said Slate. People will pay even more to stay in a luxury haunted hotel. I'll soon have those spooks hard at work. I'll make a fortune. Within minutes, the ghost's tragic tale appeared on the Spirit World Wide Web. Ghosts Online Gazette. So long shiver him. Historic hotel to be flattened. Staff face slavery to slate. The staff of Shiverham Hall are to become a tourist attraction in a new hotel built by Percival Slate. It looked as if the ghost's peaceful life was coming to an end. Next day, the staff watched from the shadows as Slate dreamed of what was to come. Suddenly, a spooky figure appeared from nowhere. Yoo-hoo! She cried. Aha! Said Slate. Another spook, and a very ugly one. Don't you recognize me, Percy? Said the ghost. It's me, your great Aunt Mabel. <laughs> huh? Let Auntie give you a nice big kiss. Slate's ghostly aunt planted a slobbery wet kiss on his cheek. Slate's face turned bright red. I read all about you on the Ghost Gazette website, said Mabel. So I've decided to come and live in your lovely new hotel. Live here? But, but, but. I'll look after you, Percy, cried Mabel. I'll feed you up on my special cabbage soup, and I'll make sure you get a bath and a big kiss every bedtime. Slate had been terrified of his aunt when she was alive. Now she was even scarier. I've ch ch changed my mind! He stammered, tore up his plans, and ran. All the ghosts cheered. Mr. Quiver approached Great Aunt Mabel and bowed. Thank you, madam, he said. Please stay as our guest for as long as you want, for free. Chapter 2 School for Spooks Tammy Tremble was learning how to be a ghost, but her first week at Creepy College had been a disaster. Things began badly on Monday. Miss Hover, the poltergeist, had shown the class how to make objects float in midair. Keep them nice and high. Ribbit. I'm totally unmoved. But Tammy couldn't seem to get anything off the ground. On Tuesday, Tammy took a fright class with Miss Screech. But no one was remotely scared by her efforts. Not even Marley, the school cat. Woo! What a catastrophe. On Wednesday came Miss Faintly's lesson on how to walk through walls. The rest of the class slid through with ease and received gold stars. Ouch! The only stars Tammy saw were the ones spinning around her swollen head. By the end of the week, Tammy was the unhappiest pupil in the school. I'm never going to make the ghostly grade. While the rest of the college went on a haunting field trip, 
Tammy had to stay behind and study her spookery. Slowly, Tammy's skills improved, but could she keep them up? She was taking a well-earned rest when a cloud of smoke wafted by. Marley the cat had knocked over one of Miss Screech's torches. The school was on fire. Tammy had to call for help. The only phone in the school was in Miss Creepy's study. When Tammy got there, she found the door locked. There was only one thing to do. Thinking back to Miss Faintly's lesson, Tammy crossed her fingers and charged at the door. To her amazement, Tammy found herself on the other side. She'd done it at last. Tammy quickly called the firefighters, but they couldn't get there for 15 minutes. She had to find a way to put out the fire, and fast. Tammy opened a window and floated out of the school in search of help. She was hovering over a nearby construction site when she saw just what she needed. Can I borrow your truck, please? Get back to school, kid! Getting through the study wall had given Tammy new confidence. Now she was ready to try her scaring skills. Ooh! Help! The driver leapt out of his cab in terror. Now came Tammy's biggest test. She concentrated on the truck. It was a lot heavier than a toad. Using all her energy, Tammy lifted the truck into the air. Moments later, it was hovering above the blaze. Tammy made one last effort and flipped the truck over. Its load of sand swamped the flames. Within seconds, the fire was out. Phew! At that moment, the firefighters arrived. Miss Creepy and the rest of the school weren't far behind. The students found Tammy lying in an exhausted heap. What happened? cried Miss Creepy. As the firefighters made sure everything was okay, a tired Tammy told her story. That evening, Tammy was the star of a special ceremony in front of the whole of Creepy College. But she was too sleepy to enjoy it. Perhaps when she woke up, someone would tell her she was now a grade A spook. Chapter 3, The Tale of the Haunted TV One Saturday afternoon, Glenn Goggle was watching TV. Suddenly, the set made a funny fizzing noise and the screen went black. Glenn's dad called out Mr. Sparks, the repairman. You've worn it out, lad. It wasn't my fault. Mr. Sparks put the television in his van and returned with a battered-looking replacement. Glenn had never seen such an ancient TV set. It's better than nothing, said Mr. Goggle. Glenn's parents had no problems watching the TV, but the first time that Glenn tuned in, something strange happened. Hey, this isn't Cartoon Club. A man in strange clothes appeared on the screen and burst into song. Welcome one and all to the world of Harry Hall. Harry was a terrible singer, but he was so funny, Glenn didn't mind missing the cartoons. rinky dink a doo ba 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 boo The next time Glenn switched on, Harry appeared again. This time, he was dressed as a magician. Prepare to be amazed. This show was even funnier than the last. Every trick Harry did went wrong. Oh, dear. Oops. Oh, no. The useless magician made Glenn laugh so much, he had to turn off the TV 
to stop his sides from aching. Next day, Harry tried to dance and kept tripping over his own feet. Although Harry was funny, Glenn was starting to miss the cartoons. Glenn was about to switch channels when Harry fell forward and came through the TV screen. Then he grew to full size before Glenn's astonished eyes. Whoops! Huh, what's going on? Glenn was amazed. <sighs> Sorry, panted Harry. I should have taken more dance lessons when I was alive. Glenn gulped. You mean you're a g g ghost? That's right. I always wanted to be on television, said Harry. So when I became a ghost, I decided to haunt this set. You were very funny. I didn't mean to be. I can't rest easy in the spirit world until I'm a star, he sighed. Glenn felt sorry for Harry. He offered to let him stay if he stopped haunting the TV. Harry spent the next few days moping in Glenn's room. Then one afternoon, Glenn showed him a ticket. Look where we're going, he said with a grin. Come and watch Talent Time, the top TV talent contest, being recorded Saturday, October 4th, 3.30 p.m. at XYZ TV Studios. Big cash prize for the top act. Harry was full of excitement. He'd never seen a TV show being made before. Glenn wasn't sure if spooks were allowed in TV studios. Harry shrank himself down so Glenn could smuggle him inside. Are we there yet? Shh! Glenn was relieved when he reached his seat in the audience. Harry peeked out as the lights dimmed and the show began. There were singers, dancers, and comedians. Glenn thought they were great, but Harry did nothing but grumble. I could do better than that. Quiet! Glenn didn't notice the ghost float away, so he got a shock when a full-size Harry suddenly appeared on stage. Harry pushed the other contestants aside and went into his act. He sang terrible songs. He messed up his magic tricks. And he finished with his clumsy dance routine. The audience roared with laughter. Harry won first prize as the star of the show. He called Glenn on stage to say thank you. With a big grin on his face, Harry faded away. Glenn grinned too. Harry had given him the prize money to buy a brand new TV.